Have you ever read a research article only to say to yourself, I don't know how to interpret these findings? Maybe that's because the result has been reported as a standardized mean difference, a term that many healthcare professionals struggle with. In this video, we will discuss why standardized mean differences are used in meta-analyses and how to interpret them. A standardized mean difference, or SMD for short, is a summary statistic used when the studies in a meta-analysis assess the same outcome but measure it in different ways. This sounds reasonable, but what does it really mean? To understand what an SMD is, we need to look at how outcomes are measured. There are many different types of public health interventions and many ways to measure their impact. For example, we may want to know if a public health program affects the length of time women breastfeed or increases the number of fruits and vegetables people consume per day or improves teen mental health. Outcomes such as these are measured using continuous data, which means the data can have almost any numeric value. For example, the length of time women breastfeed could range from one day to a couple of years, the number of fruits and vegetables consumed could range from none to between five and 10 servings or more, and on a 10-point scale, teen mental health could range anywhere from zero to 10. Typically, when we describe continuous data, we report the average, also known as the mean. Let's review how this is calculated using teen mental health as our example. Let's say mental health was measured by asking teens to rate their happiness on a scale from 1 to 10. We calculate the mean by adding together all the reported mental health scores and dividing the sum by the total number of teens who provided a response. In this case, we would divide 30 by 5, which gives us a mean of 6. To determine the effectiveness of an intervention to improve teen mental health, we compared the mean score reported by teens exposed to the intervention to the mean of those not exposed. If the difference between the two means is zero, we would say there was no difference in mental health scores among those exposed to the intervention compared to those not exposed, and we might conclude that the intervention was not effective. If you were considering the results of just one study, it might be rather easy to interpret the findings. However, your organization likely prefers to use the results of systematic reviews or meta-analyses to inform policy and practice decisions. You search Health Evidence, a repository of reviews evaluating public health interventions, and find a well-done meta-analysis on teen mental health. Now things start to get interesting or possibly nerve-wracking as you notice the result is reported as a standardized mean difference. Your first instinct might be to move on to the next paper. Who would know? But instead, you roll up your sleeves and decide today is the day you will conquer SMDs. While the 10 studies in the meta-analysis all evaluated the effect of an intervention on teen mental health, each study measured it differently, making it impossible to compare results across studies. Before they can be aggregated, the results from the individual studies must be standardized to a single common measurement. Once results have been standardized, they can be aggregated in a meta-analysis to produce a single value, which is known as a standardized mean difference. However, an SMD is not tied to any specific unit of measurement, so it can be challenging to know how to interpret it and how to use it to inform your public health decisions. Recall earlier, I said that when the difference between means is zero, those exposed to an intervention are no better off than those not exposed. The same applies for SMDs. So, if an SMD is zero, we would say that those exposed to the intervention were no better off than those not exposed. In other words, the intervention may not have had any effect. An SMD above zero can be a positive or negative finding depending on the outcome being measured. The same applies when it's below zero. In our teen mental health example, we want to see an SMD above zero because it would indicate that teens exposed to the intervention had more positive mental health scores than those not exposed, suggesting that the intervention was effective. Sometimes the desired impact of an intervention is a reduction in the outcome, say people contracting the flu. In that case, we would hope to see an SMD below zero, which would indicate the intervention was effective because fewer people reported having the flu. In our example of teen mental health, 
Let's say the meta-analysis reported an SMD of 0.45. For this outcome, we know that an SMD above 0 is a good thing. But how large of an effect is 0.45? Some suggest that an SMD between 0 and 0.2 can be interpreted as a small effect, between 0.2 and 0.8 as a moderate effect, and anything above 0.8 as a large effect. So we can say that the SMD of 0.45 in our example indicates a moderate effect size. This seems like compelling evidence to implement this intervention, but public health decisions are never that simple. It is important to also consider the confidence interval for this result. Watch our video, Understanding a Confidence Interval, for more information on how to interpret this statistic. Besides the research, you need to consider other factors before making your decision. NCCMT's model of evidence-informed decision-making helps you consider all the sources of evidence that can influence your decision, not only research, but also community health issues and your local context, community and political preferences and actions, and public health resources available to you. Your own public health expertise will help you incorporate all these sources of evidence into your decision. Once evidence from all factors is considered along with the SMD, you will be better able to determine if the anticipated inputs are worth the expected outcomes. Please view our video on evidence-informed decision-making on our website for more information on how to consider all these influencing factors. In this video, we have discussed why standardized mean differences are used in meta-analyses and how to interpret them. With a little practice, you will become more comfortable and confident in your ability to interpret SMDs as well as explain why they are required. Greater understanding of SMDs will help you apply evidence in your practice, contributing to enhanced public health outcomes.